I am Professor Dr. Narin Malhotra, past president of Foxy, ISAR, ISPATH, and many other organizations, and the international director of the South Asian Federation of OBGYN, the SAFOG. Today, we are going to talk on genetics of human reproduction and infertility, a very difficult topic. So, kindly pay attention because it is very difficult to understand the genetics. Our learning objectives are that uh, we want you to know what is genetics, what is our genes, how many genes we have, how the chromosome is built up, how these genes uh, cause disease, how to counsel for them and how to try to uh, assess a patient or a couple for genetic diseases and how to test them and try to manage them. Today, genetics has entered the mainstream of medicine. It is no longer restricted to that we say it is a rare disease. Whether you are practicing in a big state or a two-tire city or a metro city, you are going to run into or all of us are going to run into some sort of genetic diseases and these cases will be seen by us everywhere. So, we cannot afford to ignore that uh, we do not know genetics, so I do not know this. What the misconception generally is with the gynecologist and even the practice physicians and all that genetic diseases are very rare. Genetic disorders are always inherited, genetic disorders are not treatable and there is hope, no hope for a family with genetic disease. Now, these are all myths. So, we have uh, to diagnose and to know what the genetic disease is and maybe offer some treatment. Now, when we talk about genetic diseases, the features commonly are constitutional and lifetime because it will remain, affect multiple organ systems. Hospital admissions for these people will be frequent like Down syndrome, Edwards syndrome, Patau syndrome. Turnaround time for any report will take 10 to 15 days because it, it has to be sequenced. The tests are highly complex and require very skilled staff. The majority of the work is manual right now, computerization is coming in, AI is coming in now. Results will apply to the patient and the family open reproductive options can be discussed after we come to know of the results and it does involve some ethical issues, some cultural issues and a lot of social legal issues uh, if there is a genetic disease uh, in this thing. So, that is that is how the genetic disease will face to you. Now, the, we know that the human genome has been decoded about two decades back and we have about 3.2 billion alphabets AGTC, AGTC arranged in our genes and we have about 25 to 30,000, 20 to 30,000 uh, genes in our body. We know that the genetic genes are associated with changes or mutation and when this mutation of genes occurs, there is a disease which is going to show up. Uh, this has changed the way we view diseases. So, we have a genetic uh, uh, or origin of disease and these genes may lie dormant and nothing happens if the lifestyle or the epigenetics is good, but if the epigenetics is bad, the bad genes get activated and you actually start seeing genetic diseases. The nucleotide is T, C, G, A. Those are the alphabets uh, which you will come across when we are talking about genes and we will come to this. The human genome consists of a gene which is the basic unit of inheritance. Genes are organized on chromosomes. In humans, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes. 46 chromosomes, 22 are uh, autosomal, somal somatic, and one pair is sex chromosomes, XOY, XX, or XY. The human genome consists of 6 million ba base pairs, and we will just tell you what it is. And as we told you, 20 to 30,000 genes, the exon is 1.5 percent, the rest are either regulatory about 8 percent or are introns, which are junk. So, the actual genes which work are only 1.5 percent of the 20, 30,000 genes you have and 8 percent would be a regulatory genes and the rest is all junk genes. So, we have a lot of junk inside us. Each chromosome is consisting of two chromatids. Each chromatid has a centromere, a short arm and a long arm. If the centromere is in the center, it is metacentric. If it is towards one end, it is sub metacentric. The small arm is known as the P arm and the long arm is known as the Q arm. So, P Q and near the terminal end is the acrocentric if the centromere is near the term acrocentric. Now, these are 
abnormal. Look here. This is the centromere and you have the short arm, the P arm and the long arm and it, if it is in the center, it is equal or if it is acrocentric, it is on the one side. Now what is DNA? DNA is the genetic blueprint, uh, deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA. It is located inside the nucleus of the cell. It is a wrapped up structure called the chromosome and when you spread it, it is a double helix interlinked with the uh, nucleotides. And we know that we have uh, 46 chromosomes, 23 uh, autosomal, uh, 22 autosomal and one sex pair or 23 pairs in each cells. Now DNA is made of four bases. This acid is made. The A adenine, the T thymine, the G guanine and the C cytosine. So A, T, G, C, A, T, G, C. That is how the DNA uh, nucleotides uh, are made up of. And it is a double helix and uh, from the double helix, two complementary strands of DNA must align with each. So A pairs with T on this side and G pairs with C on this side. Now this sequence has to be maintained. So this is the sequence of a DNA. So you see here on the side, there is a sugar phosphate backbone, a sugar phosphate backbone on the other side and the nucleotides are AT, GC, AT, GC or the base pair as we call up. The building blocks of DNA are nucleotides. Each nucleotide has a sugar a phosphate nitrogen base on the sides and four different nitrogen base in the DNA uh, are nick. And these are alternating base provide the code or the genetic code. So 23 uh, chromosomes, half come from the father, half come from the mother and dependent. And when you put these chromosomes, when you get a, uh, do a karyotype, you need a dividing cell because that is the time the chromosomes are dividing and you will get all of them in the nucleus and then they are uh, stained and then they are picked up according to the size, chromosome 1, 2, 3, they are all different and then they are organized or arranged as a karyogram uh, and it is classified as 1, 2, 3, 4, X and Y. Each chromosome is different, that is how it is recognized as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what can be the abnormalities? The abnormalities, one number can be uh, occur in both the whole chromosome, uh, which could be structural or numerical and it could occur in the gene in the chromosome or where the genes are. Now at the gene level, it could be a single gene uh, disease, it could be a trinucleotide repeat expansion, it could be a deleted part of a chromosome, it could be a deleted and inserted into the other or inserted. It could be a point mutation, this point is mutated to this chromosome, unrelated one, one from seven or things like that. Or it could be at the whole chromosome level, uh, which are aneuploidies, uh, translocations, tetraploidies, triploidies and all that. So the examples of some common diseases are abnormal numbers, uh, three chromosomes, 21, uh, Down syndrome, 18, 3, Edwards syndrome, Patau syndrome. 13. Abnormal structure of that chromosome, Chiarudja Chat, Dujord syndrome and Williams syndrome. Sex chromosome abnormality, Turner syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome. And single gene mutation, cystic fibrosis, CFTR and thalassemias and G6PD. So these are the common ones which the baby, people are born live with and we are interested in this when we are doing going to do the infertility workup. Now the numerical problem of chromosomes could be aneuploidies, aneuploidies could be monosomy that means one missing, trisomy that could be one extra, tetrasomy that could be two extra instead of two pair it could be four. Like you see here in this aneuploidy in the uh, below you see trisomy of 21 or there could be polyploidies, polyploidies means all the chromosomes have, are three or they are four. So that could be triploidy or tetraploidy. This is Down syndrome, uh, 21, abnormal, 3 there, 1 in 800, intellectual uh, uh, disability and genetically it is known as a trisomy. Edward syndrome, trisomy 18, 18 has 3 and the babies are born with severe IUGR and intellectual deficiency and it is genetically known as trisomy. Trisomy 13 or Patau syndrome, 13, cleft lips, cleft palate and again these have a low survival and mental disability. In Turner syndrome, there is only XO, the Y is missing or the w, next X is missing. And in Kleinfelter's, there is an extra S. These are also, you will come across 
when the patient come to you with infertility. Now, when the cell divides in mitosis or meiosis, mitosis, it has a prophase where the chromosomes are in the nucleus separating, then metaphase, they go around and anaphase, the align side and then the two cells form the half and half are gone. So, they, are, they divide into half, equal number goes here, that is the mitotic division. The meiosis is you have the XY, the homologous pair and then it synapses, then there is a crossing over and then there is meiosis and there is meiosis 2. So, you finally have 1, 1 chromosome in 4 cells or the divided as uh, you saw in the meiotic division and then they will go to the mitosis division. So, sperms will have spermatogonia, primary uh, spermatocyte and then it undergoes meiosis 2 that is equal number divided half half then spermated again second meiosis division and then each one differentiates as a sperm and it is carrying one Y. While oogenesis, oogonia 2, then primary oocyte 2, meiosis, uh, mitotic division, then meiosis 1, secondary oocyte or the polar bodies. So, then the meiosis 2, the second polar body and you get an oocyte with half the number of chromosomes. And this oocyte when with the sperms will equal the chromosomes again. So, this is what the cell division occurs and the division of the chromosome occurs in the sperm and when they will reunite again, then they will form the complete karyotype of 